Today, I'm here to discuss a guide to launching a product, a land where art meets science. Hi, I'm Sarika Tyagi. I'm a product leader at Amazon. While I've been with Amazon for almost three years, I have over 18 years of experience building products in corporates as well as as an entrepreneur. I've co-founded two startups. My first startup is Scarlet Fresh Shoe, where I build instant shoe repair and foot pain relief solutions for women's dress shoes, and it's still my side gig. My second startup was in healthcare space called My22 BMI, where I built technology products and offered health consulting services for direct to customers as well as businesses. I've also worked in large organizations um, such as tech companies, um, such as EMC Square and Cisco Systems, where I work on internal infrastructure products, mostly products that get consumed internally by the, uh, by the employees. I also worked at Cameron, which is an oil and gas um, uh, space, where I built large systems for oil processing for operators such as Shell and British Petroleum. And then I work for Capital One um, and currently at Amazon, where I work on digital products for direct to customers. I've really had the fortune of working across six industries, across different types of products and distribution segments. So, you know, bringing my experience together today, I'll walk you through my mental model around launching products, a framework to thinking about product launch strategy across the different distribution segments. So think about whether it's a business to customers directly, a business selling to business, or even when you think about infrastructure products, products that are internally consumed by other employees. And finally, having done both, I'll discuss my experience of launching products in large organization uh, versus in startups. So what does launching a product really entail? You know, first of all, it's a very well coordinated effort with all your stakeholders in the company. So think engineering, your marketing, your research, product, your sales teams, all of these stakeholders together. Launching a new product is often looked as a sequential step to, you know, product development, which leads to increased failure potential of the product. If a product is not developed, keeping its launch strategy in mind, even the best designed and developed products may fail. It's not just important to bring awareness about the product and its value. It is equally important to enable your customers to engage with your product. You know, think, give free trials to your customers, show demos, um, make the returns easy for your customers so that they can provide their desired feedback and they don't feel like once they've bought the product, they're logged into it. And above all, no launch is complete without the right success metrics. Is it engagement? Is it sales? Um, is it retention? Or is it, you know, do you just want to uh, try a pilot with a large organization? So where do you begin the launch journey for your product? You know, launching a product is as much of an art as it is a science. There are objective items on your checklist as a product manager uh, you must fulfill before you launch a product. But no amount of preparation can guarantee the success of a product, while it can certainly increase the probability of it. Building the right product for your target market or your target customers is a known table stake. I mean, if your product is not fulfilling your customer's needs or solving a customer problem, that product doesn't hold a chance. So that's table stakes in today's world. But articulating the value it brings to the customers is equally important, if not more important. How else are your customers going to know that this product exists? Knowledge of your product and how it can help them is critical. It is also important to note that product launch journey doesn't start after the development is completed. Instead, it begins at the same time when you are designing and developing your product. 
you know, as a product manager or a product marketing manager, whoever is responsible for bringing this product to the customers, you know, in your product design phase is when you will start influencing those requirements because you know best what your customers are asking for at the, at the end of that tunnel, at the point of, you know, consumption. So it's, it becomes your responsibility to feed it back at the time when the product is being designed and so that it, the product offers the right value to its customers. So really, how do you know what your customers want? Well, if it's a brand new product, never launched in the market, then you can leverage your generative research that either your designer or your researcher may have conducted. And if it's a product which is an enhancement, then it's it's even easier because you can leverage your prior launch learnings and feedback from existing customers. Now, the beauty about all these rules that we talked about is that irrespective of whether your product is a service, a physical product, a digital product, or you know, just a product which is consumed internally by the employees, um, you know, all of these directly delivering either to customers, to businesses, or even in an infrastructure product, all these rules apply across the board. So how do you think about your launch strategy? How do you develop it? What components are important? Uh, and what does your launch strategy really look like? So there are eight different elements um, that, you know, based on my experience, I've put together here, and I'll go through each one of them. First one is you need to identify your customer target. And you need to be able to figure out where are you going to find them? You start, so you start with an understanding of your customers. You know, who are you going to target? What marketplace are you going to launch a product in? For example, if you're launching a product for pets, you'll want to target customers who currently own pets first. Depending on the launch goal, your target audience may be driven by, you know, you may start with your size of your market, you know, wherever your largest market is. Or you may start with the customers who have your biggest pain point. It may be a niche market, but those customers are most impacted by this current problem. A third, you can actually target customers who are very easy to access. And you can at least uh, do a quick product market fit with those customers. Second step is to define your value proposition by understanding your customers' pain points and their journey. The goal of launching any new product is to solve a customer's problem by delivering either be better, faster, or cheaper solution to them. For example, um, Amazon now sells clothes. Now, customers can easily go to a store, try the clothes on, choose what they want, and pay for them. So Amazon created a similar experience via the Prime uh, Buy with Prime wardrobe, where customers can buy the clothes and not pay for the first seven days. They receive the clothes, they try them on, they keep what they want, and they only pay or they only get charged for the clothes they keep. And whatever they return in the next seven days, they don't get charged for it. Think about Amazon understanding the customer's journey and then solving this problem even in a better way. Because now customers, it saves time for them. They don't need to go to a store and try on. And it gives customers flexibility of easy returns. And then essentially shopping when they actually have time, not when the stores are open. So think about the customer's journey and bring that flexibility to either deliver it faster, better, or in a cheaper way. The third is driving awareness and education to your customers. Now that we know what who we are going to sell to and you know what value it is going to bring to your customers, how do we make them aware of our products? How do we educate them of the value that these products or this product would bring to them? So I would run you know pre-marketing campaigns, launch a, a press release, a host pre-order sales events, conduct road shows, run social media campaigns, create value-related content that customers can understand and associate, you know, which describes a problem, how this product actually solves this problem and how can customers 
uh, you know, enhance their lives with this product. Drive specific advertising, uh, run Kickstarter. So there are many such mechanisms in which, through which you can actually bring awareness on what your product is actually capable of. Fourth is define your success metrics. Now, how do you know your launch was successful? If you look at the top of your funnel, you, you think about, are you trying to maximize the number of customers who use your product once? You know, are you looking to uh, uh, drive acquisition or sales on your product? Or are you okay with limited acquisition, uh, but you're driving retention? You want the customers who are coming to your product or using your product once, you want them to use again and again. That's customer stickiness and repeated use of your product. Are you looking to increase your customer satisfaction, your net promoter score, which means your customers are going to become proponents of your product? Or are you trying to find a company that will launch or associate with you to launch a pilot with you as a you know a test ground uh, for your product? It's very important to understand how you're going to determine the success of your product because that's going to determine some of your aspects of your launch strategy. Number five, you'll finalize your pricing, your placement, and your branding. So think um, this is where you'll actually build your financial model to define your pricing. Um, you want to understand what is the right, the right price point at which you're not overpricing yourself and you're also not leaving anything on the table. What channels are you going to sell it through? Are they going to be, you know, if it's a, a direct to customers, then Instagram or Facebook and some of these, you know, search engine optimization. Some of these would be a, a better channels than going on road shows or, you know, driving demos and so forth. How do you want your customers to associate this product back with your brand? So it's important to kind of think about what does a customer think about when they think about your product? How are, how are the customers anticipating this product is going to help them? Once again, going back to the basics, make their lives better, faster, or you know, uh, uh, get them something in a cheaper fashion. Up until this point, during the pre-launch phase, you can try multiple price points as a testing ground. You can offer your product for free to just get that customer feedback. You can even test multiple versions of your branding or, you know, uh, product pricing or placements and so forth. Number six is prepare a product launch roadmap. This is more of a tactical execution step. Now, here you would work very closely with your design, your engineering and or, and or manufacturing teams to know the milestones of developing your product. You'll define your testing plan. You'll um, uh, set up your standard operating procedures for customer service calls. You know, after you've launched, uh, what if, if a customer calls with a certain problem? Um, what should be the response of your customer service? Your press release communication, if you're anticipating any controversies upon launch. Um, your marketing to work on promotional content. Any early positive customer feedback you may have received and your launch plan. Uh, irrespective of whether it's an existing product or a new product, I would always launch in small iterations. Like something, for example, we do at you know at Amazon with millions of customers. Um, uh, we always go with web labs for experimentation as we are launching the first part. Either it's a new product or a, just an existing a, a feature on an existing product. Take a small sample, launch it. Um, uh, similarly, on both of my startups, um, you know, where we were launching new product, I first launched my product, um, you know, in a small sample, very locally, um, uh, before launching it broadly, either on Amazon to all customers, or even when I think about, you know, my 22 BMI, where we launched our app to a more niche, localized market, um, where we offered the app, the consulting services in a more focused single marketplace space. Finally, um, uh, last two steps. One is you're conducting a go no go um, right before launch. Now, what does this mean? Like you you build the product, you are um, you've done all these launch steps, and are you gonna now decide whether you're gonna launch it or not? Um, yes and no. 
uh, the answer at this point is not necessarily um, uh, is most likely i would say is going to be are we ready for a launch not necessarily is this the right product to launch or not because that stuff should have happened more so at the define and ideation phase of your product design and development at this point you're basically testing for am i ready to make this launch have i prepared everything i needed to prepare do i have the right um, customer feedback have i done the product market fit um, uh, you know at a, a very preliminary level to understand that this product is indeed doing what it was designed for so really how do you make that decision you've tested your product you've viewed your demos you've received early customer feedback and you've checked for your product readiness for digital products this is something that's also done as part of iterative launch that i was defining earlier in the execution step wherein you may launch a product and you may say hey i'm going to start with just 10% um uh, launching with 10% of my population for a few days going into 50% after that and then i will look at my mid launch analysis to say you know are my customers really complaining about something that you know this product was supposed to do but i have is not doing um are there any bugs uh, when i have actually brought it to production um uh, that i am experiencing that we were not expected to and then finally i would test my data against the north star that i had defined in step 4 to assess if it is safe to go or no go at this point finally my last step would be launching and measuring my success now this is where i go back and com compare with what my north star metric was as i had defined in step 4 i continue to get that customer feedback and measure against my success metrics So now that I have executed my eight steps and you know or defined what my launch strategy would look like, um, I wanted to share a, a, a proposed uh, strategy launch strategy framework that really applies to all kinds of products. You know whether it's a physical product, a digital product, um, whether it's a feature, small feature in an existing product, uh, whether it's an experience, you know, more so along with services. this framework discusses how to work through a launch strategy for each of these product types irrespective of whether you are whatever your you know distribution segment looks like whether you are selling it directly to customers or directly to businesses or you building them just for your internal consumption okay so we'll walk through each of these eight steps from our launch strategy and compare them against the product launch uh, products when they're launched to each of these different uh, distribution segments the first one is targeting your um, uh, customers right your um, the customers you want to first launch your product to so when you think about a b2c setup your target customers are going to be individual uh, individuals right individual customers um who where you would actually look for their buying patterns or their demographics um or their true pain points that the customers are experiencing throughout their um uh, current journey of executing this task or using your complementary products that are available on the other hand when you think about a b2b product uh, we specifically look for your company profile which company are you going to sell to what is the size of that company what is their investment potential uh, what are the strategic plans does your product fit into what their goals and objectives are for next year on the other hand when you think about infrastructural products you're really thinking about you know within the large organization that you have which teams have strategic goals and objectives that align with the consumption of the product that you're going to deliver to that org and if the uh, you know the the top buying the management leadership buying is not there for your product consumption then you know that 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 particular org or team may not be the right uh, team to begin um, launching your product the second one is the defining your value proposition now irrespective of the distribution the segment whether you're selling to customers directly or to businesses or within your organization 
In this phase, you will evaluate your customer's pain points. You always think about in terms of whoever is going to use my product. Do I understand their pain points? Do I understand my competitor landscape? Who else is selling a product in this space today? Whether it's a direct competition or it's a substitute product that my customers may be using today. And you would articulate how your product delivers this, once again, better, faster, or cheaper to the customers. Third step here is how are you educating your customers? It's going to be different as well, depending on whether you're selling it directly to your customers. Because when you think about bringing awareness to your customers in a B2C setup, you may drive social media campaigns, you may write blogs, you may do search engine optimization. But when you think about bringing awareness to your businesses, you would probably access um, uh, you know, those conferences uh, where you actually expect to see some of those businesses come and you know uh, contribute or participate in in some industry journals you may actually do road shows you may do uh, demos uh, for you know companies to come and see what your product or can do or help your customers with or their businesses with versus for an infrastructure product it will be mainly driven by you know a stakeholder and leadership alignment for those teams that you anticipate would use your product Fourth one is, um, you know, in terms of your business metrics, your, your North Star metric, irrespective of who your customer is going to be, you always need to have that North Star metric. You define what does your success really look like? Sixth step here is um, the marketing attributes. So think about pricing. Irrespective of whether the product is going directly to customers or to businesses, it must be priced. You need to have some pricing associated with it. Whereas for infrastructure products, it may there may or may not be any pricing associated. More so, um, if there would be associated value that that you would have to define in terms of how it's going to customers. The sixth step is placement. Whether when a product is directly sold to the customers. Um, uh, it may be presented or be available on e-commerce sites or you know offline stores. Whereas when it's going directly to uh, businesses, it may still be an off, uh, e-commerce site. Think about um, Wayfair or Amazon itself. They sell both to individuals as well as to businesses. Um, but in a B2B setup, you may also have like purchasing groups or sales teams that are driving some of those sales. And an infrastructure product would be available through a company platform or a cloud um, or cloud services. Finally, the last two, um, of the seventh is product launch checklist and post-launch uh, checklist. Now, irrespective of, again, how you are selling or who you are selling your product to, um, all products will have a checklist. Um, there will be a strategically high level, you know, eight steps that we talked about. Um, and then there'll be more, you know, company specific um, uh, items that you may have to do or, or more product specific items you may have to do. For example, um, you know, if this is a more, uh, uh, you know, a, a controversial product or something that you anticipate may have um, PR situations arise, you will make sure that there are uh, there is more thorough uh, PR and legal privacy and legal um, um, uh, alignment done on the product versus, you know, one which does not will may not need that much of a, a legal approval or alignment. So those will be some very product and company specific items that you put on your launch checklist. Um, similarly, for post-launch, you know, every product requires customer feedback, no matter who you are launching. And every product requires that measurement against the success metrics to make sure that you did accomplish, your product did accomplish what it was set out to do. So finally, one of the questions I have personally asked um, and experienced myself as well is how is launching a product different in large organization versus in a startup? It is what you see up here. It is a work in progress uh, framework. And I'm happy to hear more comments uh, on aspects that I may not have compared here. 
Um, now, you know, having done both, like having worked in large organizations as well as, uh, you know, uh, co-founded startups and worked in startups, um, I've launched bootstrap initiatives with my entrepreneurial ventures. And um, I've launched, even with large organizations, like uh, I would say with Amazon, I've launched uh, pilots, I've launched greenfield products, which is you start from scratch and then you scale it um, uh, within, within, you know, the Amazon ecosystem. I've measured uh, things these two across like four pillars. The first one is funding, expertise of resources that supplement the design, development, and delivery of your product. Third is how success is viewed um, to, uh, to consider how the next level of funding should be uh, done or whether the product should a project or initiative should be killed or should it be um, should it continue and fourth one is the professional impact how does it help you in your career professionally um, as well as even you know personally from from that growth standpoint so thinking about securing funds you know securing funds or requesting additional funds in a large organization can be relatively easier um, as compared to in startups. Why? Because the bar for investment may be much higher in startup, um, you know, in terms of has the prototype been tested with the customers. Um, in large organizations, you always have these uh, funds uh, that are available. Um, and, you know, um, in general, there is more stability um, for and more appetite for uh, the company funds to be, you know, directed into a certain space versus in a startup, you are essentially starting from scratch. You may not even have a product or credibility to show from a company standpoint. What what are, are the founders or co-founder standpoint as a team? What your team is capable of delivering. So securing funds is, is certainly uh, harder for a startup. Thinking about, you know, finding expertise from, a, uh, you know, you may have design resources, your researchers, um, from a finance standpoint, how can you help understand the financial modeling of your product? Um, testing across a large organization is all of these elements, they are, they are um, more feasible than a startup. Because even if you don't have dedicated resources and you're starting or launching a pilot, or just doing a bootstrap initiative within uh, the large organization, um, you still have broader resources you can leverage for one-to-one -one consulting internally through office hours, or just as informal consulting where these resources have context of what this company does, what the product may, you know, how the product connects with the larger ecosystem within the large company. So bringing that expertise and context becomes much easier. Whereas in a startup, it's a, a more often a one man show, one, one woman show where, you know, a product manager may be driving some of the design, um, or maybe conducting some of the research, um, working, you know, one to one with engineers to, uh, you know, also launch the product themselves. So um, there is there's this. And, and, you know, in a startup world, there may be more dependence or reliance on third party consulting services. Uh, who may or may not have the context of the product in the industry or just about the company. Success measurement is also interesting. Like in large organization, if there is, uh, you know, even some traction, even some directional success, it might be easier to get that extra funding because then there is some conviction that is built. There is a, a level of risk appetite. But in a startup, uh, this is uh, also what happened with us at my 22 BMI where we had a, uh, we had a small prototype where we had launched with a small group of niche customers but it was not enough to build that strong conviction to raise the next level of uh, funding that we needed and um, you know we had to fold the business um, even when there was some directional um, traction that we had generated finally from a you know professional impact standpoint uh, you know high risk high reward when you are in a startup world um, you're obviously more likely to um, see if you see success, there is a much higher reward. Um, you get to really drive your vision. You get to really make the calls in which direction your product is going, um, what value you will continue to offer to your customers versus in a large organization. Um, there's, there's lower risk 
but also there is a lower reward like you know the maximum uh, money that you can make or maximum impact that you can have on your product would also be limited with that um, i am happy to take questions um, uh, you know i'm I look forward to meeting you all in the q and a session on uh, 23rd of january thank you